Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chief Pamela A. Smith, the Chief of Police of the Metropolitan Police Department here in Washington, D.C. I'm joined today by D.C. Chief Fire John Donnelly, Fire Marshal Edwin Kaufman, and Captain Jeffrey Wade of MPD's Homicide Branch. We are here to provide an update on the fatal fire that occurred Sunday morning in the 3400 block of 23rd Street Southeast. Let me start off by first extending my sincere condolences to the family, uh, to the friends, and also to the community uh, due to this tragic um, incident. Um, it, it is certainly a, clearly a case of domestic violence where three people lost their lives over a senseless uh, interpersonal conflict. We want the community to know that the suspect responsible for this offense is in custody. 56-year-old Robert Simpson of Southeast was arrested and charged with three counts of felony murder and arson relating to this incident. We believe Simpson is the sole suspect responsible for this horrific casualty. I'm now going to turn this over to Captain uh, Jeffrey Wade with our homicide branch who will walk you through the investigation. Upon completion of uh, Captain Wade's uh, explanation of what happened, um, I will turn it over to Fire Chief Donnelly who will also give an explanation on how his team responded and supported us in this event. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Captain Jeffrey Wade. I'm with the Metropolitan Police Department's Homicide Branch. I'm going to be discussing a brief timeline of the events that surrounded this incident that we're speaking of today. On Saturday evening at about 7.05 p.m., 70 officers responded to the report of a destruction of property at 3486 22nd Street Southeast. Upon arrival, officers learned of a window that had been broken at the residence. The suspect was not on scene at that time. MPD took a police report for destruction of property. About two hours later, just after 9 p.m., D.C. Fire responded back to the same location for the report of a fire in the rear of the house. D.C. Fire arrived on scene and observed an extinguished fire that was set in a trash can. Firefighters then notified the D.C. Fire Investigation Unit to respond to the scene. The investigation revealed that the fire appeared to be intentionally set, and it was discovered that Robert Simpson was the person who had lit, it, lit this fire. Several hours later, at about 3.40 a.m., MPD responded back to the same location in reference to a 911 call for a domestic assault. When officers arrived, there was no suspect on the scene. <clears throat> the victim reported that an assault had occurred earlier that day. The victim showed no signs of injury, nor did she require any medical treatment. The victim identified the suspect in that case as Robert Simpson. Officers remained on the scene for over an hour, canvassing the area in an attempt to locate Simpson. This information was relayed to patrol officers working the scene and around the area. At about 5.29 a.m., MPD and D.C. Fire and EMS responded to 3486 23rd Street again for the report of a structure fire. After the fire was extinguished, three victims were discovered inside. An adult male and an adult female were pronounced dead on the scene. The third victim, an elderly female, was transported to an area hospital where she passed away earlier this morning. When our members arrived on scene, based on the information that was known to us at that point, a lookout was then rebroadcast for Robert Simpson. A short time later, MPD officers stopped Mr. Simpson in the 1500 block of Mississippi Avenue Southeast. Mr. Simpson was subsequently arrested for the arson offense that occurred the night prior at 9 p.m. Detectives continued to investigate these crimes throughout the day. It was determined that there was sufficient probable cause to charge Mr. Simpson at that point with three counts of murder in relation to these deaths. At this point, the investigation is still ongoing. We know that the suspect and the victims all knew each other. We believe that at one point Simpson resided at this location with all of the other victims. We believe that Simpson and the 34-year-old female decedent were involved in a previous romantic relationship. We continue to work with our partners at DC Fire and EMS, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, and the United States Attorney's Office to determine if further charges will be filed against Simpson. Thank you. I'm gonna now turn it over to Chief Donnelly of DC Fire. I am uh, Chief John Donnelly, DC Fire and EMS. Uh, this, I, I talked to family members this morning at the scene when we were returned to the scene to uh, talk about fire safety in the community. And um, it's truly a devastating event. Uh, it's emotional and it, it's not very often that we have um, events like this. Uh, I'd like to run you through a little bit of the response yesterday real quick. Uh, units were dispatched. Uh, it looks like a one-minute call processing time from the OUC, which is very quick. Um, they were dispatched at 5.30. Uh, OUC got the call at 5.31 for us. 
at 532 our units were dispatched and at 535 they were on the scene uh, so it's a three minute response time right to the edge of the city as quick as we could possibly get there um, when they arrived on the scene they found a uh, first floor fire well involved with fire showing from two windows in the front door um, and a report from neighbors of people trapped in the house they also had been informed by the OUC that people were trapped in the house they immediately uh, went through the front door um, with their hose lines to put the fire out while another crew accessed the second floor rear window um, located a victim inside and brought them out over the ladder um, that victim um, had a chance to survive for a number of reasons one their door was shut um, which is really important in terms of keeping the smoke and heat out of your room and the second part of it is once they got down they received amazing medical care from the medics on the scene the medics on the scene administer cyano kit which helps to counteract some of the smoke poisoning um, and is a critical factor in life saving and then they were taken to the MedStar's burn unit which having that asset in our community means that uh, we have a great medical system so every chain of this all the way along um, before the crime really get you know is what makes this even more tragic people were doing the right thing um, people responded worked very hard and, and still the outcomes terrible so um, I think it's been since the about 2010 that we had a triple fatal fire in the city uh, so these are rare occurrences and it's something we're going to continue to work work on and making people's homes safe Chief. Thank you, Chief Donnelly, and thank you, Captain Wade. Uh, we will now open up the uh, press conference for any questions you may have. Yes, sir. I'll, Captain Wade. Yes. So the victims range in age from 34 to 85. The eldest victim was 85. <clears throat> um, the first male victim was identified as Robert McKinnon. The elderly female victim was identified as Margaret McKinnon. And the third female um, decedent was identified as, I apologize, Miss Cunningham. Uh, she is 34 years old. Jessica Cunningham, my apologies. So we know at this point in the investigation that all three victims, to include Ms. Cunningham, uh, resided there together at one point. Uh, we are not aware of any other additional uh, romantic relationship with Ms. Cunningham other than with that of Robert Simpson. No, there is no familial relationship at all. Yes. So there were several calls that precipitated this event throughout the day. The 3 o'clock in the morning call of the uh, alleged domestic assault was Ms. Cunningham calling 911. And then was there, you said that No, that's one in the same event. So with that event, that was the about 9 o'clock event, um, a trash can receptacle was set on fire that had extinguished prior to uh, D.C. Fire's arrival. When they investigated this crime, they observed that a, uh, a roll-up shade on the window appeared to have been intentionally set on fire as well. That self-extinguished prior to uh, arrival. So did he go into the house on these three occasions? No, we, we are investigating that actively. We don't have all the information at this point, uh, but we do not believe so. Sure, sure. Yeah, after every one of these calls for service, the, uh, the units were actively canvassing and actively looking. Um, after the first incident that you're referring to, uh, we needed to put those units in service to answer, continue to answer radio calls. Um, they've remained in the area. We had officers in the area. Uh, we just had to continue to answer radio calls.
So, so what we want to say is the information we're getting is very preliminary. Pre preliminary. Uh, we do have information that at some point, Mr. Simpson, as well as the three victims, all live together in that home. We don't know. So, so based on the investigation at this point, uh, we do believe an accelerant of some, some type to be involved. Uh, that is under investigation. There will be additional testing uh, to determine that information. That is a possibility. Um, we cannot say for sure at this point in the investigation, but that is part of the investigation. That's definitely a possibility. So, so all of that information is still being actively reviewed during this investigation, but it appears that she was trying to report an assault that occurred prior, we believe earlier the day before. Yeah, those are roughly... Uh, correct times. No, we do not. So the fire, the call for the, the fatal fire came in around 0 5.30, 5.30 a.m. in the morning. Um, uh, between that and 0, 6.30 in the morning, at some point after 6 o'clock, he was stopped. There have been past calls prior to this um, and, and calls for service at this location as well as other locations. I don't have all the numbers exactly on hand, but we are aware of previous calls going back a significant period of time. I, I know that a call occurred last year at some point between the two parties, the, the suspect and Miss Cunningham. I wouldn't say I wouldn't I wouldn't And, and what I will say, and, and first, first, thank you for the question, Mark. And I think what I will say about that is that, you know, we have to make decisions with respect to uh, when when um, citizens call. In this particular case, when we, when we go back to the phone call that was made with respect to the domestic violence is, issue or incident, um, it's our understanding preliminarily that the call was made with respect to an incident that had occurred, not that day, but day, previous days before. Um, and then when the incident happened when we responded at, at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, the officers were canvassing. It's my understanding that based on uh, what we know to d at this point is that the officers remained in that, hour, in that, in that area for well over an hour. Um, and, in, and, if, and as you know, I mean, oftentimes when we have these types of situations, uh, we do spend time canvassing, looking for the suspect, but we also put our folks back in service until we can find some other identifying I information or, or circumstances that requires us uh, to place someone at the at the home. I mean, we just wouldn't just sit officers at a, at a particular location for an extended period of time. Um, I think the investigation uh, that was conducted with respect to knowing who he was, getting out there right after the um, the the fire, the last fire at 5:30 this morning. That morning occurred. Um, the officers did a, their due diligence with really getting out there and finding out who this gentleman is and bringing him, his person is rather, and bringing him into custody, which is what they did. So, 
So that is still a part of the investigation, as you know. At this point, we would not be able to reveal that until we can gather some more information, witness account, family family account. Of, as you know, the all of the occupants of that home at this point are deceased. And so we're really going to have to rely on um, a lot of uh, family relationships and, and conversations and information from the general public. Yes, sir. Another, yeah, yeah an, another tragic incident. You know, whenever we there's a loss of life. I mean, in any any way, shape, form, or fashion. And in this particular one, it is it is a death investigation. Our team uh, immediately responded when the call came in uh, with respect to a five year old who was unresponsive. Um, the team uh, conducted the preliminary investigation, um, and and at this point, we have um, placed uh, the father. Um, under arrest, uh, probable cause arrest uh, with respect to um, what has happened in that particular um, instance. Again, um, our condolences goes out to the family um, of, of the five-year-old, whether it's the mother, whether it's the grandmother. I mean, this, this young man was also a, um, a student at one of our schools. And so this, this is certainly a tragedy, and it just doesn't impact uh, his family, but it impacts those of them who have relationship with him in our community. I'm not, uh, off the top of my head, I will have to get that information back to you. And he's a juvenile, and certainly we, we will take that information uh, it, it with respect to uh, next notice of kin and so forth and so on. I have. We're still working on that. Um, I, as a matter of fact, I was in the middle of crime briefing um, when I made a decision that we were going to hold a press conference with regards to this. And so I'm still gathering information uh, with the incident that occurred on Southern Avenue as well as the one on Eastern Avenue. What I can tell you about the one on the Eastern Avenue, uh, we do not have um, a lot of information with respect to what happened there. And as I was coming here, uh, the team is working diligently to provide an update on what has occurred um, over on the Southern Avenue part of D.C. Hey, Sam, how are you? Good morning. So you would have to, and certainly appreciate the off-topic conversation, but with regards to the response for how OUC operates its policy, you would probably have to reach out to Heather McGaffin. So I am not familiar with the process that's underway for, for um, collecting the data, but what I can do, Sam, is provide a response back to you. Let me look into it. I think that's the fairest way for me to say that since it is an off-topic conversation, a question, and I'm not prepared to answer it at this moment. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, everyone.